by reason of what I do when people die usually people try to inform me either to pray for them attempting to raise them back or just to help manage the grief and all of that you've heard me say these things again and again let me tell you the truth if you've stood before many dead bodies there is a sermon only a dead body can preach that body has to be dead to preach that sermon and I have listened to the sermons that have come from many dead bodies great bodies but now dead bodies educated bodies but now dead bodies warrior bodies excellent in stature sickly bodies healthy bodies that died and all of them lie before life the end of the achievement of all men is provided you are breathing if you are not breathing the story is over as far as this realm is concerned the only thing you can transport out of this realm is one singular relationship backed up by your years of investment to the kingdom these are the only things that sustain the power to have value beyond life dr miles taught us that in all our achievements we should not be carried away by mundane things we will build the houses we will feed the poor we will extend the influence to the farthest points as God grants grace. But in all that doing, we will not forget to remind ourselves and remind all those who are within our care. The Bible says in Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, it says, take heed to yourself first and then to the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Take heed to yourself. I've preached it many times here. I won't die young by the grace of God. But I will never fear death. Never. It is unnecessary to fear death when Jesus is in your heart. It is unnecessary to fear death when you have found your place in life and you are spending your life serving him. For me, like Paul, I will emphasize again as I've done, to live is Christ and to die is gain. You don't run away from profit. The reason why we contend for longevity is not the fear of death. It is to allow us ample time to serve the purposes of the kingdom within the script allotted for us. Listen to me. If Christ tarries, a day will come. Nobody looking at me here will be in the earth. It will be another set of people. The same way there were other sets of people before our arrival. The wisdom here is that in all your getting degrees, in all your pressing to be an exceptional person, in all your passion to do ministry and excel in ministry, in all your passion to want to get financial resources as important as they are, in all your desire to maximize destiny as we title this talk, it is important for you to have it at the back of your mind that anything without Jesus only ends here. The continuation of your relevance is directly connected to your being with Jesus and your receiving his life. I have seen people die. I know they were not saved. It was a painful feeling because based on the authority of scripture, the destiny of all sinners and all believers, unbelievers is defined. As painful as that may be, maybe some of them were your loved ones today right now is an uncomfortable truth but if we are to judge by the integrity of scripture we know where they are and it is not a good place some of them left this morning some of them left last week some of them entered the new year we laughed together but they are gone today some of them laughed when we preached they mocked when we cried calling the name of Jesus they mocked to scorn as we rolled before the king of kings and for them destiny has folded Someone came to church tonight and in the midst of all you have heard me teach, you shouted amen for promotion, you shouted amen for increase, you shouted amen for prophetic relocation. I hope you will shout amen when I mention Jesus. I hope you will shout amen when I mention the wisest question that all men must ask and answer. Now listen, you can delay in answering every other question I ask life will forgive you 
but there is one question that when you delay the consequence is eternal there are people who would discover and answer the question who am i when they are 40 or 50. it's not the best but at least it's better than nothing there are others who will answer the question where am i coming from late in life there are others who answer the question why am i here late in life there are others who answer the question what do i have late in life life will forgive you even abraham he started a major part of his journey from 75 life forgave him but can i tell you the truth there is one question that if even if you answer and you do not answer properly both life and eternity will not forgive you that is the question where are you going from here You came to church because for some of you, you've answered all four remaining the faith. You have a healthy perception of yourself. Congratulations. You know where you come from because you've hung around church. You understand instinctively and by training why you are here. You have a vast understanding of your potentials. You've attended all kinds of leadership seminars. And they have trained you into piecing together your value. You can articulate them with uncanny mastery. But the one question the Lord is asking you tonight, and this wraps up my contemplation with us today, and also in honor to the late Dr. Miles Munro, where are you going? I'm not sure when Dr. Miles Munro said that he knew that he would soon be gone. I'm not sure. I never heard him say that he was going to go early. Even though I heard him say very confidently that even if he left early, it didn't matter. Little did he know he was prophesying and truly he left. All of us will not go the same day. Our times are in the hands of God. There are those who started this year. You know some of them. Today they've joined the cloud of witnesses and some painfully are in hell. My final call to you is that the greatest secret of your confidence in life should not be the cars that are parked in your garage not the amounts that are stashed in your account not the certificates that you have not the jewelries that are stashed in your box not the clothes that fill your room not the awards that decorate your office not the paraphernalia that life has brought around you the greatest basis of your confidence should be that in all of this if all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world, Jesus is more than gold. I don't know how true it is, but I was told that one great giant of faith years ago when he left, they went to search his accounts and search other things, hoping that there would be so much money there. And I don't know, they didn't find as much as would be expected and according to the story the people were surprised this man was so wealthy we knew him to be wealthy while he served what suddenly happened that he's long gone he was told that the man would put a big table to eat and invite everybody and say come and dine and eat honestly let me tell you don't wait till you are old before you understand the vanity of life without Christ no certificate will replace your refusal of jesus when life is done